Hi Mighty Kids, we're so glad that you joined us today. My name is Samantha and I'm going to be your teacher, so let's go ahead and get started. So this month, our theme is called the Big Blue. Last week, our key memory phrase was, where God calls, He won't let you fall. And today, our story is called The Hungry Submarine. Let's talk about our main character. His name is Jonah, and he was a prophet on the run. He had the ability to speak for God about the future. That's pretty cool, right? When God gives you a gift or an ability like that, he wants you to use it. Just like that Spider-Man quote that says, with great power comes great responsibility. However, Jonah wasn't being very responsible right now. That's because he was buying a boat ticket to a place called Tarshish. That's a fun word to say, right? The reason that this wasn't responsible is because this place was the very opposite of where God wanted Jonah to be. God wanted Jonah to be in Nineveh, not Tarshish. You see, Nineveh was a great big city, but it also had a great big sin problem. God's message to Nineveh was that he was gonna destroy it because of their great sin. And Jonah was like, I'm not going anywhere near that place. So what he did was he got in the boat and he went below deck and took a nap. After Jonah had been napping for a while, he heard somebody yelling at him, get up, how can you be sleeping at a time like this? Once he woke up, he realized that he was sleeping through a big massive storm. 
The captain that woke Jonah up was really scared and he was really pale. So he asked Jonah to help pray. After all the people on the boat got up to the top deck, they started casting lots or rolling dice to see who was responsible for bringing this big storm on them. And it all pointed to Jonah. So after Jonah told them that he was a prophet on the run, the sailors were terrified. So Jonah said, if you want the storm to stop, you have to throw me overboard. The only thing was that they were in the middle of a big storm and they couldn't get to shore. Finally, the sailors prayed and asked God for his mercy and his forgiveness as they threw Jonah overboard. As soon as Jonah reached the water, the storm stopped. Jonah chapter 1 verses 16 through 17 tells us what happens next. It says, The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Okay, Mighty Kids, it's Imagination VR time. Let's go ahead and put on our imaginary headsets. Everyone good? Okay, let's go. Do you guys smell that? It smells like rotten sushi. We're inside the belly of a big fish. No wonder it's so cramped and sticky in here. Ooh, it's gross. Is that a seagull skeleton on the floor over there? Ooh, I wanna get out of here. Wait, do you guys hear something? It sounds like a voice. It sounds like somebody's praying. You push your way deeper and deeper into the fish's stomach and it gets smellier and stickier, but the voice gets louder. That voice is Jonah, and he's praying. It sounds like he's repenting. Then he starts singing about God's greatness. <gasps> then you hear a loud rumble coming from outside of the fish. <gasps> it must be picking up speed. It gets louder and louder, and then it stops. Now, there's a different kind of rumble. It's coming from behind Jonah, from the back of the fish. A rush of water and slime blows you and Jonah out of the fish onto the beach. Ugh, the fish threw you up. But it's better to be thrown up and be stuck inside the body of a great fish and then turn into a skeleton like in Pirates of the Caribbean. This time, Jonah obeys God. He goes to the city of Nineveh and preaches God's message. The people receive it and they're crying, they're fasting, they're praying. Even the king of Nineveh repented with his whole heart. Wow, God really did a great thing in Nineveh that day. And that's because his love is greater than all of the sin. Wait a second, why is Jonah walking away from the city? Shouldn't he be celebrating? Thousands of people repented and got saved. That's something to celebrate. You watch Jonah as he goes outside the city and sits down and is acting grumpy. You hear him arguing with God. Why is he mad at God? This is what Jonah complains to God about. He says, didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. The Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry about this? Wow, Jonah is acting like a pouty baby. As Jonah is sitting there, something green starts growing out of the ground. At first, it looks like a snake because it's moving so fast, but it's actually a big plant with big leaves to help shade Jonah from the sun. Jonah was so happy about this shady plant that he stood there the whole day, even into the next morning. But then God ordered a worm to eat the plant. Just as quickly as it appeared, it got eaten by that chubby worm. Of course, Jonah starts complaining about the plant because his shade is gone. Listen to what God says to him. He says, is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, said Jonah, even enough to die. Then the Lord said, you feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly and it died quickly. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? Wow. God is so merciful because his love will never fail, even when we do. So that's today's story, Mighty Kids. What a great lesson of God's great love and mercy. Don't forget, God's love never fails, even when we do. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Bye. I tell you, Jonah and the Great Fish.